Tony Poulos reporting from Communicasia 2011 in Singapore. Today I have with me Paul Scanlon, who is the VP of Solution Sales and Marketing at Huawei. Paul, welcome. You're not a newcomer to Singapore, of course. No, no, definitely not a newcomer. Thank and you. certainly not a newcomer to Huawei, but you've got a new position with them. Correct. Um, tell me what's happening with Huawei's strategy, particularly in the Asia region these days. All right, so Tony, I think we have two, two major shifts this, this year, which we started on, initiated. The first one is, you know, traditionally Huawei's grown up as a product company. And uh, what we've found is, you know, customers are always saying, you know, you guys build everything, you manufacture everything from, you know, the terminal through to the application and software. So why can't you do, you know, end-to-end -end stuff? Um, of course, that's very difficult. The company's very young. Average age is about 28, 29, maybe 30. So of course, you know, you only get things with experience. So, you know, we are old dogs and with us come some different levels of experience. So when Huawei brought me in, it was really to look at and help them in different areas. You know, they're very competent in technology, they're very capable in delivery, um, but the end-to-end, -end, which is what customers want, and quality of experience and quality of service, which is what customers want, is a very difficult animal to, to tackle. So in this new portfolio, what I'll be doing is I'll be transforming slowly. You can't transform 110,000 people in a, in a day or a, or a year even. It, it's, this is a process that will take a couple of years. But my objective is to transform it into a solution and strategy company. So we really look at business focused results. So we don't have products that are just based on features. It's tying these features through to business value to the customer. And if that's what we can do, then obviously we, you know, we improve, the, improve the relationship with the customer, the customer's relationship with their subscribers, and ultimately we, we get a better value from both, both sides. Yeah? Yeah, the industry itself is not looking at uh, OSS and BSS separately anymore. It's looking at end-to-end -end solutions. Is this what you're trying to address at Huawei? Yeah, yeah, correct. It's, um, we're looking at uh, not components selling. We're really looking at the end-to-end. -end. So an end-to-end -end includes everything from applications. So in the OSS space, in the BSS space, I think uh, today we are probably you know, number one, on, uh, sorry, number two or number three in the BSS space, but it's not well branded. And that's, um, you know, a... a we are number one, no, number two in, in mobile. We're number one in fixed. We're number number three sitting in IP. But we're the only ones who do all three. So we're number one in the to all three package. And I think the realization of that, together with our huge growth over the last five years, has shown that we have you know a particular market position. But the brand is not that well recognized. So the second initiative we've taken this year is also to look at how do we how do we change the brand image of Huawei. You know, people see a dongle, and if they flip it over, it's got Huawei on it. But that's about all they know of Huawei. So our traditional business model in the consumer space has always been to sell through our channel, and our channel has always been the operator. You know, we don't go outside the operator. That was our business model. This year, we've taken a different business model, which says we will still deal with our traditional partners, our operators and service providers, but now we will also extend it through to different type of channels. And now the Huawei brand will be there. So on all our devices, our dongles, on our smartphones, on our uh, feature phones, on our low-cost phones, as well as on our recently launched media tabs and our smart and our uh, smart pad devices, tablets. So this will extend the brand. The first, firstly, and that's in the consumer product. The second thing we're doing is we're we're changing. We're saying we will continue to excel in telecom, and we'll continue to lead in telecom. But we recognise that, you know, CT is converging to become ICT. Yes. So we've developed a very large enterprise business unit. And the enterprise business unit was created because we recognized the trend. We recognize that you know, telco is really one of the seven vertical pillars anyhow. So you know, finance, finance and banking, and oil and gas, and, and, and education and health, they're different verticals. So too is telco. If you collapse telco, the foundation for all the others is the same. It's telecoms. Mm. It's the same product range. Well, let me come back to your point about uh, the brand. Mm. Uh, I'm not so sure that Huawei isn't a well-known brand. You're certainly <laughs> getting a lot of press these days. Yeah. And um, uh, it's taken a long time for Huawei to get acceptance in the marketplace. Yeah. How does a company that's really core bases in China take itself out of that market so successfully? It's been a remarkable story. I mean, yeah. It's still in progress, but yes. it's, you, you've won some major deals worldwide. What's the secret behind that? Um, the secret, all right. So uh, a few facts and figures to back up, this, the, back up the, the story. So today, 65% of our revenue is offshore, outside China. So it, it is a big growth. Obviously, it's about, you know, how did we tackle the market first? The first one is you've got to have some decent products first. The second one, you need to develop trust. So obviously, we were, we were fortunate in finding a couple of key operators who were prepared to take the leap of faith. What did we do? We put very large horsepower behind it. So we put a lot of R&D effort behind it, together with good resources for deployment. 
And I think a differentiator I've seen in Huawei compared with other, other companies that I've been with and, and even from the operator space when I worked in the operator space is Huawei is not there to do business with you. Huawei is there to deliver. Our first and foremost is we deliver. So our objective is to make the customer happy. So yes, we try to comply with everything. We try to take that extra step. Even we don't understand it all, we want to take the step. We want to make you happy. You didn't specify it, we want to do it. Um, I have one operator who said to me, you know, we've specified everything in terms of conditions of contract and the scope of work, but you know what, I talk to my team and there's maybe five or 10% of things that they're doing that we don't know how to specify in a contract. We want you to do that, but we don't know how to do it. <laughs> Can we just put a general clause? Now, that's a very hard thing to do, yes. but we take that and that shows our flexibility. So I think one of the reasons, the other reason we're, we're successful internationally is flexibility. We don't have a very rigid approach to a lot of things that a lot of the Western and other, other vendors have, okay? So we're, we're looking beyond that. And I think it becomes a closer relationship and a different relationship. It's difficult because of the language barrier, but Huawei, you know, through people like me and others, have success in trying to localize and internationalize the company. Well, we're going to be keeping a very close eye on your progress over the coming years. Paul Scanlon, thanks very much and good luck in the new position. Thanks very much, Tony. Thank you.